G'day everyone, welcome back to the shed. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about first cars. Now, all of us car people out there in the world, we all get passionate about our first car and I'm no exception. This is mine. This is the car I bought in 1980 when I was 14. And although it wasn't the first car that I got on the road and it wasn't the car I drove when I first got my license, it was the first car I bought. So it was bare bones. I've found a frame an engine, a transmission, a couple of axles and some wheels and bits and pieces in a paddock and paid $10 for that. And my dad helped me drag it all home. And this is what we eventually built it into. Now, this one's pretty cool because this was a father and son project and I was the end son. It was working with my dad. So it was a learning curve for both of us because neither of us had ever restored a car before. And we chose a lot of parts to restore that were less than brilliant. And we saved a lot of better stuff in the feeling that we would do another Model A. And we did do another Model A later on, and we used a lot of the better stuff. But in a way, it taught me a lot about repairing parts that are less than brilliant. And this really is the first big metal shaping project I ever took on. So if you come down the back, it's actually a replica pickup. Here in Australia, we never had the pickup. And this one had been a touring car that had been made into a ute. So they'd taken the back doors off, they'd thrown the tub away, it had a wooden tray on the back of it, and it just had the conventional touring car seat back on it. So we looked at a picture of a pickup and we came up with the fact, well, if we use two of the door pillars and weld them together, we've almost got a seat back here. A bit of sheet metal for the back of the cab. It's actually got a bead line rolled across it. It's not terribly accurate. The dimensions aren't great, but it proportions well when you actually look at the car and stand back and things like that. The body, I'd just left school and I was doing an apprenticeship. My older brother was doing an apprenticeship with the power company, which was the State Energy Commission. And he was doing some of his work at the Bunbury Technical School and they offered nighttime classes. So dad, my brother and I signed up to um, do some nighttime classes and we used their equipment to make this pickup body. So folded up sheet metal and like I say, the first big sheet metal project. And we did a lot of things that if I was doing it again today, I would do a lot differently because I've got better equipment and things like that and the ideas have evolved along the way, but it's all worked. So this is basically just folded up and folded back on itself. It's open on the back. The original pickup rail here actually folds in, comes back down and it's welded and riveted along the edge here to make it a lot stronger than ours. We've only got a piece of angle line supporting the back of it in here and it's just got the corners welded in and it's not riveted together like the originals were. But like I say, it's a replica and we made this I think in 1982 or 1983 this body, so I wasn't very old and for a long time it didn't have the Ford script in the back. And a lot of people said, oh, look, it's too nice. Don't change it, leave it alone. And I said, look, I'm never gonna be happy unless it gets the Ford script in there. So I toyed with a lot of ideas, but in the end, I actually wound up cutting out a piece of steel, grinding it into shape, and then welding it to another piece of steel. And I had an exhaust pipe bender at the time, and it would push 70 ton on the top ram. So I put a block of wood across the end gates and I put my die in there and I pressed the 70 ton up there and I left it jacked up on pressure for a day or so. And that actually made the female part of the die. That actually pressed the forward script into the block of Jarrah. And then you can probably see there's a couple of little pinholes I welded up. I actually pinned it with a couple of rods through it. And then when I put it on the tailgate, I drilled the tailgate, dropped it on the pins, dropped it on the block of wood and then I put it in a 100 ton press and jacked a heap of pressure up on it to actually press the forward script in there. Now, like I say, learning car, a few big mistakes along the way. I learned after I'd gone to the trouble of doing this, this is the modern forward script, which turns up on the Model A's, but the pickups used carryover Model T parts and they used the Model T script. So I have made other pickup bodies for other people further down the track and I've got them a lot more accurate than this one. But this is my car, I like it like this. and. There really is a story for every part of the car. The back fenders. We're actually watching a movie and we're at the drive-in 
and there was a Model A pickup driving along there and we noted, Dad spotted it, I spotted it, that the pickups actually use the roadster back fender and they're quite a wide fender. We had touring car fenders and two door fenders and they're actually cut to fit the body so they actually are scalloped around here and most people when they would build these cars into utes back in the day they'd wind up with a piece of metal riveted on there or they'd flatten out the piece of steel on the back and they would come up with some sort of arrangement of welding something to it or riveting something on it to make it fit onto a ute body. We didn't want to cut up good car fenders. So we've been looking for some fenders that we could modify without actually destroying a good part. Now we heard about a Model A through a car enthusiast and it was in a gravel pit in a town in the southwest and it was a fair way from here. And I was, like I say, didn't have a driving license at the time. So Rob and mum and dad and brothers all pile in the car and we charge off to look for this thing and we're wandering around this gravel pit and we spent half an hour or so and there's no Model A there no mobile phones, so we drive back to the nearby town and ring the guy and he said, no, no, it's definitely there. Gave us another set of directions and he had told us to take a shovel. So we went back and we had another look and I spotted the corner of a Model A frame just sort of poking out of this pile of gravel that had been bulldozed up by the Shire and that was the Model A. So dug it out and there was this pair of back fenders that were wafer thin, they were really rusty. They'd been mangled up because they'd been squashed with the bulldozer that had pushed up the gravel, but they were good enough for us. So they've been cut across here and cut around there. And we've just got the outside edge. they both sides have had a heap of patches welded around here to get them just so they'd look like a Model A fender. And then there's a piece of sheet metal been welded in here to make them into the wide fender. And it works, it looks the part. The proper pickup body's got a spacer in between the side wall and the fender, but like I say, ours is a little bit wider, it's a little bit longer, but when you look at the whole package, it does proportion well. The running boards, I got off a friend of mine who's also got a Model A, which coincidentally he bought when he was 14, but he's a few years older than me, and they were on his two-door sedan, and so it took me a lot of years, but I finally talked him out of the commercial running boards with all these little pyramids on them, but given that they were made in 1928 or 1929, they were well worn where people had been stepping in and out and the little diamonds were worn through. So what I did was I swapped them side to side. And so this was actually the original right running board and the wear was back here. And the other one's the original left running board. But Robbie Teal being Robbie Teal and young and stupid, I sat there with a MIG welder and I welded all these little diamonds and then I sat there with a grinder and I ground them all back into little diamonds. And I spent, think I spent about three weeks of spare time just playing with Model A running boards until I got them to the point where um, I was happy with them and painted them and put them on the car. But from the sheet metal perspective, we made the splash shields in here. The fenders were really bad, so we made backs, we made sides. Where the wired edge goes was all gone, we've replaced those. Where they touched the splash shield in here, and where they touched the frame through there, they were gone. We made pieces and put in there. And even these two rails that run underneath the side of the bonnet or hood, we made those. And they're not perfect, but like I say, three guys that really had nothing to do with sheet metal before, it wasn't a bad job, made new sections for down the bottom of there. And then there's a few reproduction parts on it and things like that. The step plates that go inside under the doors, they're just repros. And um, the bonnet, the hinge was broken off that. And that was the last thing that we tackled. And in those days, Dad was doing a lot of the welding and with the oxy torch, so the gas welding, and the hinge was broken off it. So we actually welded the hinge back on. And that was one thing that he walked around for a long time. And then when he did it, it all worked out. The only drama is it's a little bit tight here, just where the weld shrunk it in there. And after I painted it and put it together, opened the bonnet and it's taken the paint off there. And yes, I haven't got around to fixing it. Now, the paint on this car is nearly 30 years old. And I painted it along the lines that Ford did originally in the fact that originally the black was enamel paint and the color was lacquer paint. So this is all painted in two pack, the black, and the green is painted in acrylic, which is lacquer. The other thing with commercials, the paint was left 
just as it came. They did nothing to beautify it. They were not sanded or polished or buffed or anything like that or rubbed out as the term was in those days. So all of the paint on this car is as it came off the gun. It has never been polished, it's never been buffed, it's only ever been washed with soapy water. And let's face it, it's a 30 year old acrylic paint job, old two pack, and really I can't see much difference in the quality of this paint to the quality of that paint, given the time that it's been on there. And it's worn, it's been used, there's scratches and things like that in it. But if we got out there today and gave this car even a polish, the paint would come up a hundred times better than what it is now. It's light on for rego. Um, it hasn't had registration on it for quite a few years. It was registered, but then marriage and children came along and it was just another thing that we um, couldn't really afford at the time. So we took the rego off it. I have been promising myself for the last few years that come summer, Model A will be on the road and I'll actually put some miles on it. But um, that hasn't happened, but hopefully this summer coming, it's June now, so we've got a few months before summer hits us in Western Australia and then um, we might be out tearing around in our Model A. So I am sure that there are many more of you out there who have got fond memories of your first car. If anyone wants to flick a picture even and a few comments about your first car in the comment section on the video, or if you're in our Facebook group, put them up in there. We'd love to hear from you and what you had and how long you owned it for and when it got away. And, um, but yeah, but this is my baby. This is the one I bought when I was 14 years old. Now, it's basically all original, it's on 12 volt because, let's face it, if you've got one 6 volt vehicle in your fleet and you don't use it much, it's always going to have a flat battery. So a number of years ago I put a 12 volt alternator on it and I converted it to 12 volt. It means that I can just swap the battery between various vehicles and um, we're ready to go. It's just easy, like I'm not one of these people who said, oh, they need to be on 12 volt because they don't. The six volt system works really well in these. But Model A's are great. Like this hasn't been running today. So if we turn it on, pull the choke up and just give it a little bit of throttle. And that's how they go. There's no automatic advance retard on these. That's the advance and retard for the distributor. Pull it down and you're ready to go horn button on there, that's the light switch, and there's no high or low beam on this, well, there's no parking lights on this car, we've just got low beam one way and high beam the other way, but they've got tiny little globes, there's no real difference between high beam and low beam, they're dim and dimmer, and um, I am a bit cramped up in here, my six foot two frame doesn't really like being squashed up in the Model A, but they're just, they're just a great little car, and um, I certainly love it. I'm Rob Teal. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.